the lesions have been visible for eight years. Lesions started a single paritic papule on his left leg with a slow growth affecting the entire leg, as you can see in these pictures, while new lesions appeared on the opposite leg associated with intense pruritus at nighttime. He denies pain. Uh, there were palpable lymph nodes on the left leg. The lesions include nodules, keloid-like and polymorphic plaques, some of them ulcerated as you can see in these pictures. The patient was treated with oral antifungal pills not specified by the patient for at least three months without any improvement. Routine lab results, which include CVC, CMP, AST, ALT, and renal function were normal. And also chest X-ray was normal. So a biopsy has requested. This is the first case. And the case two is, is about a four years old male from Ecuador's Amazon region complained of six years of lesion on his chest, back, and right arm. As you can see, a lesion started on his chest as only nodule after a traumatic lesion with local tree accompanied with pruritus. New lesions appear over the years and became elevated. The lesions are characterized by plagues. So uh, uh, some of them ulcerated and closed like papal and nodules. The patient was treated with topical antifungal cream and other oral drugs not specified by the patient. Routine labs, which include CVC, CMP, AST, ALT, and renal function were normal. And also the check the raised war was also normal. So a biopsy has requested for the second patient. The case number three. So it is about a 52 years old male from the Amazon complaining of four, of four years of a slow growing tumor on his dorsal right hand. So as you can see in this picture, lesions started as only tiny ulcer after trauma on his dorsal hand. They became nodular. Two new lesions appear after the lesion started uh, the lesions were initially asymptomatic, but became itchy over the years. The patient was treated with oral antifungal pills for more than four months, but uh, without oh. any improvement. And the routine lab results, oh. which include CVC, CMP, AST, ALT, and renal function were normal also. So a biopsy was requested for this Third case. Okay, case number four. It is about a 32 years old male who farmed in Ecuador's Amazon, complaining of two years of lesion on his dorsal right hand, which started growing in a diameter. As you can see in the picture, lesion started as an insect bite with a slow growth over the months. It was asymptomatic and became elevated in the last year. The patient denies pain and uh, he was treated with a uh, topical steroids and antifungal cream for six months without any improvement. Again, re uh, routine lab results, uh, which include CVC, CMP, AST, ALT and renal function were normal. So a biopsy has requested for this uh, fourth case. And the last one, it is about a 55 years old male, otherwise healthy, complaining of five years lesion on his lower left abdominal wall. He used to live in the uh, Ecuador Amazon. So as you can see in this picture, the lesions started as nodule after he experienced trauma with his work tools. It healed properly, but after a few months, it is slowly increasing size. It was asymptomatic with occasional itch, 
the nice pain, and no lymph nodes were palpable. The patient applied topical antifungal creams for around six months until the lesion started to itch. So these are our five cases. And the differential diagnosis about this with this clinical manif manifestation or differentials included, but was not limited to deep fungal infections, which include lobomycosis, sporotrichosis, chromomycosis, and paracoxidioidomycosis. Also, keloids, leprosy in his nodular arboricus variant, DFSP also, and a cutaneous metastasis, and finally, lymphoproliferative disorder, we think about or dose differential. So with the histopathology results of the previous five cases, we have these slides. In case number one, on the left, you can see the dermis with an inflammatory infiltrate. And on the right, wrong structures pointed by the arrowhead. These fungal structures got a change-like configuration as you can see in this picture. <clears throat> also in this one, as you can see here. And in case two, we can identify a B refringent membranes antique walls, and again, change like configuration of these yes cells. In case number three, the dermis is filled by these fungal cells, which have the same characteristic than the previous two. And also in case four, with PAS stain, the B refringent membranes is more appreciated and yes, cells are grouped as in this, in this slide. In case number five, the fungi have, a being, a, have very thick cell walls and are often arranged in chains. So in this picture, you can see a, uh, there is a streaking periodic acid shift positive uh, where the thick cells walls are very easily to see. Bodings forms are occasionally present. And in silver stain, notice the thick walls interconnecting with the structures of the other yes cells. Finally, the fungus cells are best visualized with silver stain. So with all of this information, definitely uh, to achieve the diagnosis, we should include a clinical evaluation where most of the lesions were characterized by colloids like, plus geographic distribution in, in the Amazon. And there uh, were all patients lived and work in the Amazon and uh, with a biopsy confirmation of broad fungal structures with B refringent membranes and T walls, we conclude that the five patients got lobomycosis. Which was the treatment? So, uh, why surgical excision was the preferred first link treatment for cases four and five with at least five millimeters margin? There was no recurrence after three years follow up. But, for patients who are poor surgical candidates as cases one, two, and three, we started with itraconazole and clofacemins, 100 milligrams for each one daily for 24 months. Another option is itraconazole and cryosurgery. Uh, cryosurgery has to be performed every three to eight weeks. And finally, itraconazole alone 100 milligrams daily if a clopacimine isn't available. Unfortunately, uh, the patients had no improvement after 24 months of treatment and the lesions continued to increase in number and size. This, this is uh, the main characteristics of lobomycosis that we can see 
in this picture as a colloid like nodules or plaques. So uh, this is my short presentation of the of these five interesting cases. This is the place where, where I work. And if you have any inquiry, you can contact me. Feel free to do that. Thank you, Dr. Escalante, for these cases. And now we are going to have Professor Garzón um, lecture. Good morning, everybody. I would like to thank you for the invitation. Now I talk about lobomycosis. You can see my, my screen. Can you see my screen? We yes. are seeing the flyer of the, your presentation. Okay, what I mean, please. And we can see your arrow. Uh, okay, wait, wait. wait sorry, what I mean, I am sharing my screen. Okay. Lobomycosis or lacaciosis is a chronic deep fungal infection caused by lacacia loboid. Brazilian dermatologist Jorge Lobo reported the first case in 1931. The disease was known by several names. For example, blastomycosis kilodiana, Jorge Lobo disease, Jorge Lobo mycosis, Jorge Lobo blastomycosis, Amazonic pseudolepromatous blastomycosis, lacaciosis. However, lobomycosis is the most common medical term. Most cases are found in tropical regions, mainly in endemic areas as Central and South America, particularly Brazil. More than 550 human cases have been reported. Lobomycosis is a chronic condition that presents multiple types of cutaneous lesions on exposed areas, mainly keloid-like lesions. The lesions are restricted to the skin and subcutaneous tissue with no systemic involvement. This is very important point. The diagnosis is confirmed by the following triad. Fungus identification on the red microscopy, on histopathology, and no culture graph. Antifungals commonly effective in other subcutaneous mycosis are not successful in the treatment of lobomycosis. Currently, is no therapeutic approval fully satisfactory. About the etiology, the taxonomy of this fungus is confusing and has changed several times since its first description. For example, Glenosporidia loboi, Blastomesis brasilensis, Glenosporosis amazonica, Paracosidiosis loboi, Blastomyces loboi, Lobomyces loboi, Loboa loboi. Most recently, Taborda proposed the binomial Lacasia loboi, Arwin, that previous designation were taxonomically is invalid. Care et al. after amplifying the ribosomal DNA have contributed to clarify the taxonomic enigma of this agent, placing it in the onigenials order and in the Achelomycetae family. Into the kingdom fungi, diverse division, diverse order, Remember, order on ingenialis. With uh, electronic microscopy uh, studies show with similarities between paracoicidiosis brasilensis and lacasia loboi. Cellular structure is mainly an immunological 
immunological similarity sorry, is important. These points put both species in the same taxonomic classification. Molecular techniques identify eight antigens of P. brasilensis in serum of infected host with L. loboi. But in these patients, Mendoza and et al, demonstrate that immunodominant antigens with a high molecular weight, suggesting L. boy has antigenic proteins with much higher molecular weight than the counterpart P. brasilensis. You can see in this slide, sorry, you can see in this slide the order, sorry, the division ascomicota, ascomicota, basidiomicota, basidiomicota, into ascomicota, you can find dermatophytes, dimorphic fungus, yes, and mold. And look in the order or in the genals, you can find coccidioidorismiris, histoplasma capsularum, lacasia luboi, and paracoicidiosis brasilensis. Then it is simple to think paracoicidiosis brasilensis has many, many simili similarities with lacasia luboi. About the, the factor of etiology of lacasia luboi, L. Loboy has a regular round shape, either isolite or in a change. You can see isolite and you can see shape or a change or rosary form. The size are approximately C for 13.5 per 11 millimetres. Its cellular membrane is b refrigerant with a thick wall containing melanin. Look here b refrigerant and thick wall. Its reproduction is by a simple hemulation without the sporulation, forming blastoconidias and leading to the typical rosary bead like figures, as here. For a study's purpose, it is impossible to cultivate a boy in culture medium. Inoculations can be used in several animals, hamster testes and chick pouch armadillo, tortoise, dolphins. Accidental inoculation in humans has also been described. About pathogenesis, lobomycosis can cause primary skin infection in humans and dolphins. Trauma is considered the pivotal event. Eloboy is a profit in soil, vegetation, and water of the rainforest. Some research speculate that insects or animals inoculations is a way of transmissions. For example, a snack bite, a stingray accident, and an accident bite. In the dermis, the fungus start its proliferative phase within the macrophages. By direct influence of eloboid, the transforming growth factor beta-1 increases its concentration. This cytokine produced by macrophage and TH lymphocytes, and it is considered to be a potent immunosuppressive molecule. It suppresses the phagocyte activity of the macrophage and has the capacity to inhibit nitric oxide and gamma interferon expression, then reducing the cell mediated immunity. This cytokine can promote the proliferation of CD8 T lymphocytes, stimulate the production of immunoglobulin A antibodies by plasma cells, and the process of fibrosis, including the formation of extracellular matrix, contributing to the keloid like appearance of the clinical lesions. Interleukin-10 is another cytokine found in the dermis of the lobomycosis patients. Together with tgf beta one both act by inhibiting the cellular immune response and as consequence, the activation of macrophage. Studies of humoral immunity in patients with lobomycosis 
exhibit a TH dose cytokine profile with an increased production of IL-4 and interleukina-6 and lower production of interleukina-2. In this slide, you can see the pivotal even in the center, increase PGF beta-1 and increase interleukin-10. And this event provoke suppressed phagocyte activity on macrophage, promote the proliferation of TH dose lymphocytes, inhibit nitric oxide, inhibit gamma interferon expression, promote the proliferation of CD8 T lymphocytes, stimulate the production of immunoglobulin A antibodies by plasma cells, and stimulate the process of fibrosis, including the formation of the extracellular matrix. Then we can have two principal events, reduce the cellular mediated immunity and promote the fibrosis of the dermis. After the proliferative phase in the dermis, there is a possibility of a dissemination phase throughout lymphatic vessels. Reports of regional lymph nodes enlargement and lymphatic spread of the disease have both been described. Other studies have described continuous dissemination and or auto-inoculation. Hematogenous spread is rare because there is only one case of systemic infection caused by elloboid, where the testicles were involved as of a distant lesion. Human transmission has never occurred. About the epidemiology and geographical distribution, the biogeographic complex of Elo Boy is situated in areas of rainforests with dense vegetation and large rivers. The annual rainfall is usually more than 2,000 millimeters per year with an average temperature or 24 degrees Celsius and relative humidity of 75%. Those climatic characteristics are found in the tropical region of the Amazon basin, where most of the cases have been described. Male forest workers have mainly been affected. There are nine countries of South America with cases, Brazil, Colombia, Suriname, Venezuela, Guyana, French Guyana, Ecuador, my beautiful country, Peru, and Bolivia. Three countries of Central America, Panama, Costa Rica, and Mexico. In poorer cases, cases please, sorry, the United States, Canada, France, Netherlands, Germany, Greece, and South Africa. Lobomycosis can be considered as an occupational or recreational infection in endemic areas. The most vulnerable populations are rainforest workers, river dwellers, and the indigenous people in certain locations as Brazilian Amazon. Lobomycosis can be included in the list of zoonotic mycosis, considering the evidence of transmission from dolphins to humans, for example, in an aquarium worker. About clinical presentation, lobomycosis has an unknown incubation period estimated to be between one or two years. It affects predominantly exposed areas, lower extremities, external ear, upper extremities, face, sacrum, chest, and neck. The time between the first signs of the disease and the diagnosis varies from months to decades. 61% of the cases present a localized side disease. It can compromise one anatomic zone with solitary or multiple lesions. The typical presentation has a fibrous appearance resembling a scar or a keloid scar. Its surface color varies from the patient's color skin to erythematous brownish or red wine with 
or without the Langetaceous. The schromic chains are commonly described varying from hyperpigmentation to hypopigmentation and acromia. Other forms of clinical presentations are infiltrative form, gummy form, ulcerative form, wartiform, tumorous, and sclerodermic. They grow progressively and can affect the lymph nodes in cases of very long evolution. Machado defined two clinical poles of presentation according to be immunological behavior against the fungus. Hyperergic with macules and gums. Hypoergic helial lesions. Between these two poles, you can have a variety of manifestations even in the same patient. This is a typical lesion. You can see this little black with red wine so face color. In the zoom, in my more detail, you can see the infiltrative form of lobomycosis. In this patient, you can see plaques, many plaques with keloidal aspects, ulcer surface. In the chest, the keloid aspects is more important. In a very magnificent element or soon, you can see papules with micro ulcers, micro ulcers, micro ulcers, but the fibrotic shape is important. In this patient, you can see verrucosum form of lobomycosis with compromise, bilateral compromise. The back of leg, and you can see in the same patient, verrucosum with ulcer, keloidal papules, and plaques. In this patient, you can see the tumorous form of lobomycosis. You can see a skull in the surface, in the soon or close view, you can see telangiectasias, 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 and a scalp. The patient with tumorous form with a very long evolution, you can see dissemination, lymphatic vessel dissemination. You can see the line triad of these lesions, nodules, 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 with the skin surface normal and the tumorous form. In this patient in abdominal area, you can see this tumorous form with surface skin color normal, without the langetaxias, without the skulls, and you can see a many little ulcer. Most of the lesions may be asymptomatic. The lesions can generate pain by touching, itching, burning, anesthesia, hypostasia. When the lesions are in just articular position, there can be restriction in the movement. When the lesions are in, in exposed areas, they can provoke significant aesthetic compromise. Secondary infection and carcinomatous degeneration are the main complications of these lesions. Diagnosis is based on, first, clinical aspect of the lesion. It's very important you suspicion diagnosis when you can see keloidal lesions, keloidal-like lesions. It's important to think in lobomycosis in endemic areas. Two, second point, identification of the agent within the lesions. For this point, is important, the best diagnosis procedure is a biopsy. There are, sorry, there are many others techniques, diagnosis, for example, vinyl adhesive tape, direct examination, but the biopsy is the principal or mainly procedure technique for diagnosis. The main stent biopsy is hematoxylin eosin, but the agent is better visualized 
with silver stains, for example, brocode stains, metaramine stains, and PAS stains is other procedure. The typical histopathology picture is a dense and diffuse histiocytic infiltrate of the dermis with different number of fungus. The dermal histiocyte infiltrate is composed of a large number of epithelioid, multinucleate, and Langhans cells with or without the presence of granulomas. The granulomas are present with the hyperagic immunological behavior of the patient is, is present. When the granulomas are ausent, is because the immunological behavior of the patient is no good. Sometimes we can see aggregates of large antomatous histiocytes with clear cytoplasms or finally granular eosinophilic cytoplasms without parasites in the histiocytes. Those are called pseudogaucher cells. Fibrosis is a streaking feature and steroid bodies may be seen. In the histopathology, the epidermis presents rectification of the red rites of atrophic areas, acantotic areas with presence of hyperacaratosis. You can see maybe esponchiosis, neutrophil collation when the fungus is into the epidermis, hyperplastic infundible when it is associated with transepidermical elimination of the fungus. You can see in hematoxylin eosin, the fungus, you can see with the rosary shape, rosary shape or isolite. It's a very beautiful picture because you can see the B refrigerant wall and thick wall with the rosary shape and isolite. PAS stain with you can see the fungus more red color with a thick wall with silver stains is a beautiful picture because the fungus you can see with brown color and thick wall. Be refrigerant wall, thick wall, rosary shape, and you can see this very big hastiocyte, multinucleate hastiocyte. Differential diagnosis with other deep mycosis, mainly with chromoblastomycosis and paracosidiotic mycosis. The biopsy is the technique pivotal for diagnosis. Chromoblastomycosis, you can see in the histopathology, Cooper bodies like as a light penis sense. And paracosidiodomycosis, you can see the shape of Mickey Mouse with a central round with two little ears. Other dia diagnosis, differential diagnosis with leishmaniasis, mainly with verrucosum form, this Hansen disease, heloids, and with other fibrotic tumors like, uh, as DFSP. Treatment, the ideal treatment is wild surgical excision. In case of the surgical removal patient following up is necessary for a long time before considering it cured because the lesion can repair. At present, there is no effective drug treatment and surgical removal is the most used therapeutic procedure. In this case, you can see excision and cure with flap, surgical flap. In this case, in abdominal area, surgical excision with a primary closer. There is no optimal drug training. Many antifungal agents can be tested with unsatisfying results. For example, ketoconazole, amphotericin B, sulfa compounds, maybe dapson, and syncofluorocytosine. Hydraconazole has been shown to be partially effective and can be used to support in preventing recurrence of surgically removed lesions. Hydraconazole with Christ surgery has been successfully used to treat relapse of lobomycosis. 
The only successful oral treatment with complete response was reported in Advolfin using myconazole. The new assaults with expanded spectrum may probe to the be effective. Posaconazole has been used for 24 months and has achieved the cure of the lesion without reappearance in a five-year follow-up up period. Clofacimine with doses of 100 to 300 milligrams daily for up two years has been used in some reports with unsatisfactory results. Interestingly, the experience of the leprosy elimination program of ACRE in Brazil's patients with lobomycosis and concurrent leprosy have been shown to respond to multivacillary therapy with reduction of pruritus and size of the mycotic nodules. This is all. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much, Professor Garfon, for this uh, very educational lecture. Uh, I've learned a lot, really. Uh, and I think now we're going with the multiple choice questionnaire that um, Dr. Escalante will, will share. Sure. Just give me a minute, please. Okay. Okay, can you see the slides? Yes, perfectly. Okay, um, thank you again for this opportunity. So now uh, we are going to show you um, five questions about this topic. So the first one is the ideal treatment of lobomycosis is surgical excision, catoconazole, amphotericin B, dapsone, or clofazimine. So you have 60 seconds to uh, write your answer. And we will launch the poll so you can answer here in your... Oh, sure. Let me see. Well, yeah, maybe can you help me with that? I think it's not working right now, so we can go with the slides. No problem. Okay, problem. Okay. So definitely the answer in this question is in surgical excision. Uh, as, 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 as you know, uh, lobomycosis um, can grow in any, in, in any exposed area. So the surgical excision will be always the, the best way to remove the lesions. Uh, but in patients uh, where surgical excision isn't an option, so the other drugs are a possibility but uh, as you know, uh, uh, the result, the response of the uh, of to these drugs is uh, is isn't isn't good for the patient because the lesions continue to grow. So the second question is: the most frequently reported lobomycosis infection site is pina, upper limbs, lower limbs, chest. I'm back. You have again 60 seconds to answer. as is done by some of our participants. You can share your answer in the chat room and we will see them. Twenty more seconds. Okay, definitely the lobomycosis can affect 
all the skin. But um, in some reports, in some reports, Pina is the main is the main place uh, where it is affected. But in our experience, lower limbs are the main place, the the the, the highest rate uh, where it's affected. So the for uh, for this question, the correct answer is lower limbs. Next one. The main clinical manifestation in lobomycosis is nodules resembling scars, monomorphic or polymorphic plaques, cloud like, gum like, or ulcerated presentation. Again, 50 seconds. So there are many forms that lobomycosis can, um, can uh, grow in the skin. So uh, the main, the main uh, clinical manifestation of lobomycosis is colloid-like. Otherwise, gum, ulcerated nodules, and monomorphic are definitely present in some cases. Uh, as our patient, we can uh, find all of the all of those uh, clinical manifestation in a single patient. Next one, number four, the main cause of infection of lobomycosis is male to male transmission, dolphin to humans, local transmission, insect bites, or traumatic implantation. So again, fifty more seconds. So as many other uh, deep, deep fungus infections, a traumatic implantation is the correct answer. So um, there were uh, other uh, uh, transmission form reported in lobomycosis, but uh, those are not common. So traumatic implantation is the, um, the, main, uh, the main cause of infection of lobomycosis. And the last one, question number five, the ideal treatment in cases where surgical excision is not an option is itraconazole plus clofacimine, clofacimine alone, ketoconazole, amphotericin B, adapsum. So you have 15 more seconds to answer this question. Sorry, sorry. So the correct answer for the, the last question is itraconazole 100 milligrams plus clofacimine 100 milligrams daily for at least two years. But um, uh, the lobomycosis do not respond uh, as, as many clinicians would like. So uh, we have to uh, change or uh, combine another 
kinds of options, a, a treatment like amphotericin B, or maybe a itraconazole plus a cryosurgery, uh, or try to, to, to uh, combine a surgical excisions associated with a itraconazole. So for this question, the correct answer is itraconazole plus clofazimine. So, well, I think, I think all of you got the correct answer. Yes, we had very, very, very uh, good participants. They were listening to your presentation and, and I'm sure that's why they, they got the, the right answer. So thank you very much for your talk. Now it's the time for a Q&A and Rafense, who is another Gloder member, will present the questions to you. Rafense, whenever you're ready. Joseph, Joseph sorry. I, sorry. I am looking in the chat, a question, important question of the doctor of South Africa. He, he said, he, he questioned is, uh, the clinical picture of the extensive glomycosis in the, our patient in the leg uh, is very similar with chromomycosis. And he, he questioned the telangiectasias is a patognomonic sign of the lobomycosis. And I, I, I talk about that. Uh, no, the lanjectasia is no patognomy of lobomycosis. Chromomycosis is a uh, has very verucosum form when no no tumorous form. Lobomycosis has tumorous form, maybe has telangiectasias. But if you remember in the patient with tumorous form in the abdominal area, telangiectasias is not present, right? then the telangiectasias in the surface of the lobomycosis, tumorous lobomycosis, is not patronomony. Okay. Yeah. Rafense, is there another thank question? You. Good, good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much from um, uh, Prof. Uh, Gerson for presenting that first question for me. And thank you, Dr. Escalante, for an excellent and informative um, talk uh, on deep fungal infection. Um, the next question that was asked is, uh, can you also teach us more about how you do skin scrapings for deep fungal infection? Okay, the technique of a scraping is maybe it's not the principal or mainly technique, right? But the scraping with vinyl adhesive tape, you put the adhesive tape uh, mainly in ulcers forms or verucosum forms or scalps, and then put and use POH, right? And look for direct microscopy. But if you think, it's not principal technique, mainly technique is not mainly technique. If you have the possibility to take a biopsy punch is very important. Okay. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, there wasn't a lot of questions. Those were two questions that were asked. Thank you so much for a lovely talk. Thank you for your time. Thanks everyone. Thank you very much uh, for your participation and especially uh, for your, your, your talk, Professor Garzon, and for your cases, uh, Dr. Escalante. Thank you very much. We've learned a lot. And uh, finally, we will take a group photo. So please make sure your cameras are on if you want to participate. Okay, everyone your cameras, so we'll take a group photo. Okay. Okay. Um, let's, don't be shy. Wow. Wow, we'll take a group photo in one, say cheese, or say lobomycosis. 
Okay. Love of my cousin. Love of my cousin. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, uh, I'd like to to present our next and final talk that will be will be next eighth uh, of May. And we will discuss on a topic eczema, and the talk will be delivered by Professor Shara Brown from the UK and Dr. Musna Masoud from Tanzania. Hope to see you all soon, where you can see all the information on the Glowderm website. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much.